Racing games. There are many. Some are good, some are bad, some should not even exist. Well, we're exploring the new frontier. But all of them Son have of something in common. They all trigger neuronal activation. So I thought to myself, why not rate these games based on exactly that? Neuronal activation is basically when these things, well, activate or do stuff. These things are of course neurons and they transport information all over your brain through chemical and electrical impulses. There are billions of them and a whole bunch of them are responsible for your happiness, stress, sadness, well, basically any kind of emotion you can think of. <laughs> what do you mean? For example, the top dogs in contributing to why you like a certain video game are these two neurotransmitters, dopamine and serotonin. Both are neurotransmitters, the chemical substance that travel across the synaptic gap of a neuron onto another, and both of these neurotransmitters relate to when positive actions occur or are about to occur in your life. In the case of dopamine, it plays a greater role in regulating rewards and general motivation, while serotonin is more to do with the general feeling of happiness. There is also neuropreferin that chills until it has to do its job of stressing you the fuck out. Of course, a process that is vital when playing racing games. Now, to be honest, it is way more complicated than just a few neurotransmitters being responsible for your enjoyment, especially because this thing is so annoyingly complicated. But at the end of the day, who really cares that much? So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to rating racing games based on the neuronal activation. Now to start off, we have simulator games. Games like iRacer, Gran Turismo and R-Factor are all forms of sim games and to be honest, they're exactly what it says on the tin. They try to simulate what it would be to drive a real racing car in real life, minus the spontaneous combustion of your tires. For that reason, these games score very high on our dopamine scales as we humans are weirdly motivated towards carrying out actions that are close to our death. Solid 8 out nice. of 10. But simulator games are almost cursed to not living up to the full experience because these types of games are very much restricted by how much equipment you have. I mean, just a normal controller won't do these games justice. So at a minimum, you need a steering wheel. And when you have that, you might as well buy a racing rig. And when you have that, you might as well buy a gear shifter and fans to simulate wind and the thing that makes you go. So with all that equipment, simulator games get a strong 9.5 out of 10 on the serotonin scale. But if you're not willing to permanently be off the grid because your local loan shark is hunting you down for your racing rig repayments, I would say 6 out of 10. Hmm, maybe, maybe 5 out of 10, if you have a tiny monitor as well. Now, almost like a legally binding contract, you'll be forced to be thrown in a cycle of playing these games for prolonged periods, with minimal blinking, hoping to get a faster time. This will inevitably send you down an almost endless cycle of wanting to play for longer, just to shave off a few milliseconds of your personal best, when in reality, you should be shaving that overgrown facial hair and touching some grass. So a lifestyle of endless gaming and little sunlight is perfect to score badly on our newer preference scales. Now, similar to simulator games, we have our open map racing games. These are your Forzas, the Crews, your Need for Speeds, and even your GTAs. Usually, these games give us quite large maps to just freely explore, and for that reason, I'm already bumping up the serotonin score to at least a 5 out of 10. But unfortunately, when you have such a large map, and then you pair that with a massive car collection like Forza does, the game has very high expectations. So it's almost depressing when you find out that most of the cars drive more or less the same. And in reality, it's rare that you'd be utilizing the full potential of the map as you were just off-road to every single mission. Of course, you'd be doing this without the fear of ever suffering any consequences, as if you do end up hurtling into a massive tree, you will just bounce off of it, slap the car into reverse, and drive off like nothing happened. Although certain aspects of this feel rewarding and therefore dopamine inducing, especially if you're playing with or against your friends, if like Forza you overpromise and underperform, the dopamine levels go right down. But if you're a game that delivers on your promise on a big juicy map and a wide range of uniquely feeling cars, then this score goes right up. As for the new and stress score, this would get a very nice low stress score because remember, a lower score is better in this section as driving around just listening to the radio is probably one of the most relaxing things you can do in gaming. This is Earth Radio, and now here's human music. Hmm. 
human music. I like it. For the next category, we have games that mix the two previous categories to make racing games that try to replicate some form of real life. These are your games like F1, Dirt Rally, and other games that combine real life driving events and try to replicate their fun nature in a video game. Like F1, for example, replicates all the tracks and cars from the Formula Racing calendar to make you feel like you're one of the drivers. Now, in my personal experience, this is a very fun way of gaming and it's executed quite nicely. So both scores of serotonin and dopamine get quite a high rating. However, perhaps one of the most stressful things in these games, especially a game like F1, is online multiplayer. If you know, you know. Therefore, it scores a juicy 9 out of 10 on our stress scores. A very stressful game indeed. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Now we move on to more arcade type racing games. Your Trackmania, your Wreckfests, or your Beam NG are good examples of these. Fun, unique games that instill that racing aspect in their own unique ways. For example, in Trackmania, you play as this little guy in which you race around exciting tracks, and because of the mechanics of the game, there's some crazy strats in becoming faster. Wreckfest and Beam NG, on the other hand, puts crash mechanics on steroids and literally forces you to drive like an absolute maniac. These unique forms of grabbing the attention of the gamer scores them at least a 7 out of 10 for serotonin. As for dopamine, you get a huge boost at the start of playing these games, but especially in the case of Trackmania, where time is everything, that dopamine slowly drops off as you start to begin to substitute enjoyment for the pursuit of a better time. This then slowly drives up those neoporephrine levels as you start to convince yourself there is definitely a quicker time out there, but getting there is just slightly out of your reach. Now, if you got this far into the video, I would highly recommend pledging your allegiance to the channel. By subscribing, you automatically protect your brain cells from the next category of racing games, and believe me, your brain cells are in grave danger. This is because the last category we are going to be talking about is mobile racing games. Yes, I mean, there isn't much to say about these games. Like, to be fair to them, for being on a handheld device, they aren't half bad. They usually rely on crazy colors and fast-paced action like the asphalt games do, or some kind of progression aspect like hill climb racing does. The true pinnacle of gaming, if I say so myself. In fact, it would be rude to disrespect these games. It would also be rude not to disrespect them, if you know what I mean. Therefore, for basically all of them being free on the App Store and relatively fun to play, they generally would get a solid 5 out of 10 in both serotonin and dopamine scales. As for the neuroperiphon levels, they score quite low unless you end up losing fuel just before a new record, which then brings the score right up. Now, by no means have I covered every single racing game or category out there. There are hundreds of racing games and one single video would never be enough to give all of them attention. Therefore, I encourage you guys to develop your own neuronal activation scales in the comments down below. And let me know what games you would like me to cover next. 